At the age of 11, my dad had passed away because he was a heroin addict. I really was just very angry and angry with God and why this happened because my dad was in and out of my life, period. But as to why like, he took him, like I never had a chance. So at the age of 13, I started to hang out with people that were involved in gangs. So I started drinking at school, trying prescription drugs because people were doing it. It seemed attractive to me because I was just trying to numb something that was happening at home. By the time I was 15, I had already tried um, crack, coke, every prescription drug you could possibly think of. I had got kicked out of school a lot of times. I was a troubled teen, what they said, you know. So eventually I got expelled and I ended up going to a charter school. And um, that's when I met a lot more people that were involved in heavy drugs. Once I went to high school, I was already taking um, Xanax in school, nodding off, just didn't really care about my life. Um, There's a lot of things that had happened to me as a young girl where I was um, in a situation where I was molested um, by one of my cousins. At the age of 18, I had met um, a boyfriend that I was with for a while, and um, he was addicted to heroin. And um, eventually I was really sick one day and I couldn't get a hold of anybody that had pills. And um, eventually my baby's father um, gave me heroin for the first time. I just like fell in love with the drug because I really didn't feel nothing no more. It was a whole different um, feeling. I had got pregnant when I was um, 20 years old. Um, in April of 2015, I had lost my son. I had a miscarriage due to um, abuse physically, um, emotionally, sexually, and drug abuse. By then, I, I left my son's father, and I didn't want anything to do with him. And so it pushed me to the streets, and um, I got very involved with um, people that were heavy dope dealers. Um, so I started to sell drugs, and it just it got me into this life where I would do anything for it and now. And it, selling drugs wasn't enough, so I went into prostitution. Um, I started to just lose myself, my self-worth, because I have already, I mean, I already lost my, any type of worth that I had for myself a long time ago, you know. And eventually I, I met somebody that was a pimp. This time he was like a whole nother ball game where I was getting kicked in my mouth. Um, he would beat me until like I would lose conscience. I went back home with my boyfriend and he made me swallow six grams of heroin. I knew that if I didn't call my mom, I was gonna die. So it had been already 30 minutes and I was able to pack my stuff and I was able to call my mom because he had already left the house. My mom got to where I was and I was still like awake and I was still like, um, I knew kind of what was going on, but once we hit the freeway going towards my house, I started to like nod off and something kept me up though. And I heard a voice that told me that you needed to wake up and you need to get to the hospital because you're gonna live. And so I obeyed the voice and I told my mom, I need you to take me to the hospital. I'm an OD. And so she let, she rushed me to the hospital and. Then is when I knew that I had to do something. I knew that if I didn't do this, I was gonna die. And um, I had a dream when I was in the hospital that I had two choices and whether I went back to the streets, I was gonna die before I had turned um, 25, 
or I was gonna go into the women's home. So I woke up the next morning and I told my mom, I have to go to the home. Like, I cannot do this back and forth. I've been doing this for almost 11 years already. And when I went into the women's home, it was really attractive to me. I had a women's home director that was an intercessor and she told me the power of prayer, what it can do for my life and how it can draw me closer to God. And I knew that I was called to disciple women and to show them the power of God and to see a life transformed because of his love. A ministry like Rick Jarrett is just so important because we go to the places that nobody wants to go and we love on the people, we minister to the people that not a lot of people look at or pay attention to. And because 98% of our people that are in our ministry have been through the life of drug abuse, jail, prison, you know, just the street life. And so we have a commonality too with the people and when they see our lives and where we came from and where we're at now, it changes their perspective on us and God mostly. I let them know who I am and um, what I've been through, you know, being a heroin addict, a meth addict, being in um, several relationships that were not good for me and being just, just in the same situation, you know, homeless, being a prostitute, being all this stuff, you know, but knowing that the power of God and because uh, people like me were able to go into the inner cities of um, Albuquerque or wherever we're at, you know, go out there and we, we reach people just seeing that there's other girls that are out there that need help and I I knew that I was called to help other women because I wanted them to know that there's an after, you know, there's hope.